Um, I am actually Cuban and Spanish descent. My dad uh, came from Spain when he was about 18. My mom, the same when she was about 16, she came from Cuba. So I am first generation uh, in this country. My first language was Spanish. You know, I simultaneously learned Spanish with my parents and uh, English through Sesame Street and school. I was the first uh, to go to college in my family, first to go to graduate school, so first to be a lawyer. Um, so a lot of firsts. First, in, in terms of being a lawyer, obviously my, my parents being, you know, coming to, from another country and they instilled in me that, you know, education comes first, it's got to be about school, so you've got to be a doctor or a lawyer. And that's all, all I ever heard, doctor or lawyer. Um, and I did go to college and I did pursue medical fields, but clearly science and math was not for me. Um, and I thought, you know, I'm going to pursue law. In terms of law enforcement side um, and being a prosecutor, I actually had been a victim of a crime when I was uh, much younger. And once I was in college, I kind of realized what had actually happened. And I thought, how can I take this you know, horrible experience but help other people? How can, how can I be, make good in the world? And so I had thought about being a social worker, but again, you know, I had this looming thought of, no, you gotta be a doctor or a lawyer. Um, and so eventually, um, once I was graduating college, I actually went to the authorities and I reported this crime and went through the whole process of being a victim, testifying in court, um, and having the wonderful experience of dealing with two particular assistant prosecutors that kind of became my mentor. They knew I was going to law school. And um, throughout that whole journey, I realized um, this is this kind of solidifies what I'm meant to be, and this is why I, I, you know, that kind of confirmed yes, this happened to you because you need to be a prosecutor and help people. And so, uh, once I began my clerkship, I started actually sending resumes for the next year for every single prosecutor's office in the entire state. Um, and I was drawn to Monmouth. Uh, my now husband lived, you know, in Monmouth, and it was just a beautiful community and had such a great reputation. Um, I was very hopeful that I would get hired, and I was blessed with a phone call um, telling me come in an interview. And I became a law clerk first here in Monmouth, and then, you know, about six months down the line, I became uh, I was sworn as a prosecutor. So it was, you know, the best move I've ever made and, and I've been here about 18 years. So. I can tell you in, in terms of uh, Hispanic Heritage, we did um, host for several years Hispanic Heritage, which was a great opportunity to have people um, come to the office and speak about their journeys um, and their struggles in being Hispanic and, and in law enforcement and being attorneys. Um, but really one of the most personal experiences for me is I had been in Special Victims Bureau for about three years and in that time um, again the whole reason I became a prosecutor right was to help people in my position and I had some very tough cases but some successful wins in, in those years and uh, I've been very fortunate to remain in contact with my victims and there was one victim in particular who, you know, when, when we were prepping the case, getting the case ready for motions, um, I remember sitting with her family and she was so distraught and upset. And she had been in a situation that had been similar to mine. And I remember telling her, you know, this, this moment, this experience does not break you. Um, it does not define you, but in fact, it will give you direction and make you stronger for, you know, it'll, it'll build you and you will look back and think, okay, this is, this is what had to happen so that I could see what my purpose in life was. And a few years later, and I'm still in touch with her, but a few years later she had called me and said, because of you and your inspiration, I want to be a prosecutor. And that is when everything kind of comes full circle. And so that was probably the most rewarding experience in my entire career. So I would, I would like to lie and say that I love to read, but because I read all day long, the last thing I want to do is look at a book. But I really like to bake. So I'm like the little Betty Crocker at home, 
And not only do I bake, but I actually make, you know, like real uh, cakes with, you know, drawings on them and, and uh, like real bakery cakes. So one of the other EPs and I always joke that we've got a retirement gig and once we're done, we're going we're gonna to be uh, selling cakes. Another girl volunteered to drive, but I don't trust that the cakes will make it in one piece. So we're gonna we're gonna pass on that offer, but yeah, it's it's pretty much you know Miss Miss Baker at home is like my total Zen stress reliever. Right yes. Yeah, so there is uh, a judge in uh, Monmouth County, Judge Scandon, and before he had become a judge, you know, obviously he was a defense attorney in private practice, and I had some cases with him, and he had heard that I was from Spain and wanted to meet me. So at one point, we finally had a phone conversation. We got to chat, and he told me about where he was from, and it turns out that he was from a, he's from a village maybe 20 minutes from where my family is from, my dad's side. And so we had this long conversation. We figured, you know, we've got to get together, got to, got to meet. And so I hung up the phone, and I called my dad, and I said, Dad, you know, have you ever heard of the name Escandon? And my dad was like, boy, that's a really Com, you know, it's a common name in that por part of Spain, but Escandon. I feel like I know an Escandon. So we hung up the phone. I told him, you know, great guy. We have to get the families together. What a small world. I hang up, and maybe 10 minutes later, my dad calls me back, and he says, find out if this Paul Escandon's father was a lawyer. And so I did find out, you know, that, that Judge Escandon now, his dad had been a lawyer in Newark, where my parents uh, had lived for a while. As it turned out, about 30 years before me, Judge Scandon's father had done my parents' closing on their home. So, and in, and in Newark, it's a very small-knit community, all Spanish and Portuguese. So it's just funny to think that about, you know, 30 years later, here we meet, and it turns out that, you know, this is, this is the connection, not only from Spain, but to Hudson County. And in fact, there were times that he visited Spain and he visited my family. So it goes to show you that it's really a small world. The best piece of advice I'm going to give them is always embrace your culture and your language. Um, I remember, as I said, since I'm first generation here, my parents only spoke Spanish. And I can remember neighbors and people in the community that would comment and say, oh, you're, you're in America now. Speak English. And I used to think, boy, what, what an ignorant thing to say. Isn't that why we're in America? So that we can be free and speak whatever we want to speak. And then I realized as time went on, it wasn't so much ignorance, but maybe that we pose a threat. Um, so the biggest piece of advice that I would say is to embrace your culture, embrace your heritage, and speak Spanish. Make sure your children speak Spanish. Because the reality is we have a large Hispanic population in this country. And for my job, I, I, in Freehold alone, we have a tremendous community that are Hispanic, and I can speak to them, I can relate to them. And the fact that I have this additional language I always am a step above. I'm going to walk into any job interview, and once someone sees that I can speak English and then turn and speak and read and write Spanish in the same way that I can do it in English, I have so many more opportunities, so many more doors open up. So why ever hide that? Instead, no matter what anybody says, be proud of who you are and move forward, and that will make you successful. Don't be ashamed of yourself. That's the ultimate success.